one of those aha moments when I when I first got onto this. Like your background, Kevin. <laughs> I haven't cut my hair since uh, school, since school was out. So now I have like bedhead that I've never had in a while. <laughs> Just own it. And it bug my daughter too when I, <laughs> in the morning I'll go something like this. Oh, my hair is getting in my face. So yeah, you don't even have any hair yet. <laughs> John, you want me to start right now? Is everybody in? Can everybody hear me? Yep, yep we're good. All right. I know that there is a chat button here somewhere. Um, all right. So just welcome everybody to our uh, to our session this week. And Uju Nin Me Mashkoe Gabo, Uju Nin Dote Me Kusmei Kane Nin Donji. Um, for me, I'm, I'm a second language learner. I'm learning Ojibwe from scratch. Um, just kind of out there just to kind of help and support people whenever they have um, problems. I, I'm not um, like, I'm not like the, the best person there is or, or to know everything about Ojibwe language. I'm, I'm still learning. And I think uh, even if I live to 100, I'll probably still be learning Ojibwe. Um, but that's the cool thing about language is it has something called vitality. And that's the ability to, to keep um, learning new words, the ability to create new words. And I see that nowadays with uh, technology and how there, uh, there's new words for technology. And um, I, I was working on a, a project um, uh, last year and there was these elders trying to come up with new words like uh, uh, carbon dioxide. And I was like, oh man, that's gonna be a tough one. How are they gonna create that one? And then um, they, they asked, you know, what does it do? And um, so they were talking for a while. And the word they came up with was mitig Um So then I was like, oh, mitig, that's tree. And najimo is when, uh, is someone breathing? And then win turns it into a noun. And najimo win. So it's like breath. So it's like tree breath or when trees breathe. And I was thinking, wow, that's a really cool word because that's what trees do. You know, they, uh, they push out oxygen, but then they breathe in carbon dioxide. And it's almost like they're saying tree air, you know. So um, just the really cool things that you can catch when you're uh, learning Ojibwe language, uh, things like that. How's it going, Charlotte? <laughs> I haven't seen Charlotte in a while. So maybe just in airports here and there. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I'll just get into today's session, and um, it's kind of it's not it's not so much uh, about sentence making today, but it's more of those um, something called uh, morphology, and morphology is like uh, the ability to have like word parts, and I think the grammar term for them is medias, but I kind of stay away from that kind of stuff and just. Say, I just call them word parts, you know, because my audience is, is children. And cool thing is, is it has these cool patterns in there. And anytime you hear a word, you're like, oh, that sounds like this or that. And how this started out was, um, I remember uh, my grandma, uh, when I told her my Anishinaabe name was Maymashko Agabo. Oh, that sounds good. Sounds like uh, stand strong, right? And I was like, yeah, but I knew the, I knew that, um, she was thinking in her head and she had word parts. So I started thinking, I wonder what else has word parts? You know, there's, there's names that have them and I wonder what else has them. So I found a bunch of these on the Ojibwe People's Dictionary and I pulled them out and uh, they have really cool word parts. The cool thing about these word parts is they will stay the same. You know, it doesn't matter which dialect you're, you're in, these word parts will, will stay the same. Um, just different dialects use them differently. So um, just to go into some of what we're going to do. Um, all right, any questions before we get going? Sounds like we're all good. 
All right. Um, so this first one, I guess, uh, I used these verbal cards from a long time ago and I got them in vector files. Um, I mean, tech people are out there, it just means it doesn't lose its resolution. Anybody know this word right here? This first one? It could have a lot of different names for it. It could be Nibin, it could be Minogijigat. Uh, it's kind of general. But what I use this one for is, uh, is Minogijigat. And Minogijigat means it is, uh, it is a nice day. So you translate it, it is a nice day. But just to analyze it more in detail, it has this thing called word parts. So I'm gonna toss this guy out and I'm gonna bring this one minnow. Anytime I hear the word minnow, I know it means something good. Minnow gijigat, minnow aya, someone as well. Uh, gijig kind of means uh, like uh, day. It has different variations, heaven, sky, or day. In this case, it means day. And then ud is like in a state or condition. So when I look at that, that's the word parts, minnow, gijig, and then ud, minnow, gijig, ud. Um, can't tell if anyone's commenting yet. Uh, I see something going on. Um, anyways, but yeah, this is, uh, this is where this word comes into play. Um, what, what I found is you need at least two or more word parts to create a word. So by themselves, um, you know, they really don't mean anything. Like if someone says minnow, they're like, oh, sounds like you're gonna say good or something as well, but you need something else after that. You need two or more to form a word. So gijik is the same thing and then ud. You can't just go up to someone and say ud. You know, something is in a state or condition. It's in a state or condition. It needs more, and that's where gijig, gijigad comes from. So uh, that's just kind of that word part right there. And please just chime in if you guys have any questions. You know, I'll, you know, I respond better when there's questions, and I can go into detail uh, if there's um, if there are some questions. So mino gijigad, it is a nice day, and that's how this word part is is formed. Um, You'll hear ad quite a bit with BII verbs. Um, this next one, uh, let's see what this one is. Monain dum. Monain dum. And it means he or she is uh, like sad or depressed. It means more of like, um, more like depressed rather than sad. Um, he or she is sad or depressed. Monain dum. So the word part in this one is mon, mon. Um, mon means bad or malformed or poorly. And then aimed means to act on by thought or perceive it by thought or feel it in your mind. And then dumb just turns it into a verb V V A I too. So a lot of times you hear ain dumb. Anytime I hear the word ain dumb ending, I know it has something to do with your mind, and a lot of times it has to do with a feeling. You know, a feeling, monain dum. Uh, another one is gushkain dum. Minwain dum. Min, there's that word again. Uh, good, min. So, minwain dum would be like feeling good, and min is good. Ain dum is like a feeling. So, that's what I look at in here. So, this word mon, and um bad malformed poorly act on it by thought perceive it by thought feel it in your mind so that's what you're thinking about when fluent speakers are speaking ojibwe when they're throwing these words together that's how these words came together money and dumb and it's uh it's just a better understanding of the language you know when i whenever i listening to ojibwe i i, I catch these word parts and i try and memorize these word parts too because you hear them over and over again um, so next time you're listening to someone speak in Ojibwe and then all of a sudden, you know, you're kind of confused because you're not understanding the first couple sentences and they're already on their third or fourth sentences, just keep listening and listen to these word parts because these word parts will be um, pretty consistent. 
Um, is there a, am I missing chats here? I see something coming up. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, Zenega, no, yeah, there's some good examples. It happened a certain way. Um, yeah, the other one was like Gija Gun. Gija Gun is what uh, I heard. Maybe when I listen to that is like Mino Gija Gun. I might hear that um, maybe up north, a little bit towards Kenora, even uh, to look out up, up that way. And one thing I notice is they're, they're all VIIs. They're all like um, VII, which is uh, when I'm telling kids, I say, imagine the uh, II is, it is. And then V is a verb, it is, and then verb. So it is snowing, it is raining, it is a good day. Um, VIIs. They all end in either the letter D, the letter N, or a vowel. So there's just three different um, endings they have on them. So when someone says Gija Gud, um, I know that it ends in the letter D, and that's usually for like a kind of a Southern dialect. Uh, people in Minnesota speak it like that way. As you go further north, it changes to an N. So it's not really a big deal because it's a VII and it still ends in an N. So I don't really like flip out and you know, and say, oh, no, you know, you're saying it wrong or whatever. You know, everybody has their own way, and that's just how they do it in different dialects. Gichi you know, so that's how that one, that's how that one kind of rolls out. All right, so uh, I'm going to keep going on a couple of these. And we'll start with another one down here. As, uh, as I go further and further down, they're going to get a little bit more complicated. I think the first couple, I think I started out with just two and then three, and then they're going to get more complicated. Um, I shouldn't say complicated, they're just more, more detail. So, beach kone, beach konaye is how you would say it if you said it slowly, beach konaye. Um, when people are speaking uh, this word, um, I'll hear a fluent speaker say beach kone beach kone and i'm like okay so it's not beach konaye yeah that's what i said beach konaye <laughs> and then they're like oh okay um but but if they say it real fast it sounds like beach kone beach kone and you say can you say that slower and they'll say beach konaye that's all they'll say so um there's another little thing i'm working on too a document about how to Finding words and how to how a fluent speaker says them and how a second language learner says them, just little differences. And then you can make the transition from second language to fluency and just use words like this, beach kone. You can say it really quick, beach kone. And, and you kind of you sort of hear it in there, beach kone, beach kone. You can kind of hear it in there. If you say it slow, you can really hear it. Beach kone. Um, getting dressed. So, uh, so beach, put on or don something, ikone, ikone, is a garment or clothing, and e is like incorporating. So that's just kind of the glue to the whole thing. You're throwing it all together, and you're making it into um, to a verb. In this case, it's a vii verb, and that translates to he or she is getting dressed. Beach ikone. So anytime I hear this uh, this beach word, I'll look at I can find a lot of different words that are start with beach and they'll all start with put on or don something. Beach konaye. Um, so that's kind of how that one works. I'll keep going. So this one had three of them on there. One, two, three, three different word parts. Um, anyone knows this? Nibinade, he or she's fetching water. So right off the bat, you hear the word nibe, and people are, oh, I know what that means. That means water, nibe. And then uh, nade means to go get it or go fetch it. Nibe, nade, and it translates to he or she is fetching water. Nibinade. So that's another cool one where you can listen to and say, oh, I, I heard nibe in there. You know, I know it has something to do with water. And later on, you might figure out, nah, de, oh, go fetch it. Okay, he or she is fetching. Have you heard, have you heard it um, being said, not de ibi? 
yeah, not to be um, going to get it. Um, it almost uh, it almost sounds like uh, uh, you ever hear the word not to be, which is uh, going to check in next. Mm -hmm. Is that how you said it? Not the EB. Not the EB. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's another a word. A is D E, I think. Not the. Yeah. Yeah. So the, I've, I've heard this one because uh, there's another word part for water is the B. You know, in the B Kong, in the B. Mm -hmm. um, that's another one. That's another one you could say. So I know the word not does to go get it. And then it be almost like a shortened version of nibi, nibi. You hear it in words like um, nibi kong, you know, nibi kong, nibi. So that's another word part for word. So there's a lot of cool different ways you can work with language. Um, it's not just one way you can say something, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can say it. Um, what I find with English language is it really kind of limits, it limits things, you know, they want to shorten it down to one meaning, but you really can't put it down to one meaning um, because it could mean a lot of different things. So what I like about Ojibwe language is it opens your mind to different possibilities instead of narrowing it down to one way. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can say it, like the way you're saying it. Um, so what I mean, just to go in detail about um, and narrowing it down. Um, there's this word called uh, minnow Does anybody know what it means? Is that a good life? Yeah, yeah, good life. Um, so when I when I listen to that word, I think of uh, in English, it just limits it. It just says, oh, it means a good life. But in Ojibwe, it means a lot more than that. Uh, it means more like, um, he or she's living a good life, but then what does that mean, living a good life? You know, to people, it's different things. To, to me, it's like um, doing the things you should be doing. You know, you should be uh, helping people. You should be um, kind to people, helping your elders. And in return, you get that good life. Um, you know, not letting things stress you out. Maybe like if you're into smudging, smudging often. You know, just doing things that you're supposed to be uh, doing to be healthy, you know, even just walking or uh, eating healthy. So Mino Bumadizuina has all of that in there, in that one word. Um, but if you translate it into English and you say, oh, good life, okay, <laughs> it kind of limits it. And that's what I mean by uh, it, English kind of limits things. So cool thing about Ojibwe is it kind of opens it up and then you start triggering maybe some teachings you've heard when you were a kid or you know, as you're learning, maybe you, you were on Zoom last week with some elders and then you're like, oh, that, that's what they mean when they say minimum of is and, you know, talking about helping other people, um, leading the good life. So that's just kind of what I meant about uh, with the difference between Ojibwe and English out limits. Um, this next one, Ishkad Dizeh. He or she is mad. So uh, nishk, nishk is like anger. And then odd is way of being or life, the way your character is, your nature. And then is it in a state or condition. So though how that word comes together, nishk, odd, does it. Kind of looks like that. God does it. So any here, any time I hear that uh, nisk or nisk, um, that's when I think of oh, okay, something is uh, is anger, way of being, in a state or condition. So he or she is her character is in the state of anger. <laughs> so that's how that word uh, word part comes out. Um, so anytime you hear the word nisk again, you're just gonna Think of anger right away. So getting into some more detail here. Oh, funny I'm just talking about that word. Nod to Sabi, Nod Sabi, um, checking a net. 
So again, you have that word nod. And then a sub is a net. And then uh, B is like uh, throwing it all together. It is doing this action. So it is doing whatever these word parts are saying. So checking or fetching a net. He or she is fetching a net um, sub. So when you think of that word, a sub, you think of a net. Um, the other one you might think of is a, a spider, a sabakeishi, sabakeishi. So that's another example of these word parts. So what does net have to do with a uh, spider? And well, that's what he's doing. A sub is a net. The K is like when you're doing something. You might hear it in words like manumina K, you know. Um, so you're doing doing it. So he's netting. And then she is just like animal-like. So the animal or the insect that likes to set nets, we're talking about his web. So that's where that word a sub might come into play. So anytime you hear the word a sub, you think of, uh, you know, you're not thinking a subway or anything. You're thinking of uh, a net, a sub. Um, nod to sub -y. So even if you didn't know what this word was, you could, you knew the word parts, nod, fetch something, a sub, B. Like, oh, setting a net. So if you get a good handle on some of these word parts, you'll, you can kind of figure out what people are saying. Um, all right. So gi will say is another one. And there's a couple ways you can say this one. Underwangege, underwangege is another one. Um, underwangege is, is one I've heard. Uh, Gi will say is uh, uh, hunting. So um, when I hear this word gi, I think of around and then ose. And literally you're, you're saying you're going around walking. You know, when you say you will say, um, but if there's an assumption like, oh, you know, you're going to go around hunting and you're going to be looking for, for something. So that's kind of where that word comes into play. You will say, it's kind of assumed in there that you're going to go walking around hunting. I've also heard it with a Y, gi yo se, gi yo se. Um, so Ys and Ws are interchangeable. You know, you hear it in words like uh, Benochi Yug as opposed to a Benochi Wug. So you can say them that way. Um, yeah, uh, another variation, like I was saying, was Underwangege. Uh, that's more hunting, like smaller game, like birds, is the way I've heard it. Um, just to go further down on a couple more of these. Uh, I think this mm -hmm. one is uh, Zegze. Zegaze. Zegaze is um, he or she is scared. Um, so zeg, and any time you hear the word zeg, I know it has something to do with fear. I think we had this word part before too. Is ze, zegaze. So in the state of condition, in the state of being in fear. So zegaze, zegaze. Oh, pretty easy one there. All right. So, um, all right. So sometimes uh, these word parts, uh, you're gonna notice a pattern. Pattern I've noticed with some of these words are like um, it goes from um, vowel to consonant, vowel to consonant, vowel to consonant. So you have a word like ojibiege. He or she is writing, but in here you would have um, you'd have some word parts that uh, um, need a little bit more to them, and I'll go into some detail here. Uh, Oje, Oje is to arrange or form something. B is through writing, and then G is like uh, doing the action. Kind of like similar to uh, um, English when we say running, jumping. I'm running a session, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, would you be a gay? 
is uh, like, just think of Ige as ing on, on different words in English, like running, jumping, sleeping. Um, so that's how that one works. So what happens in this case is like the, the word part is ge, but then, you know, after a glottal, you need a vowel. So you need to insert something. So the letter I comes into play. And usually it's a, either one I or one O that connects them. Um, it's most, mostly it's, a, it's the letter I. So that's just inserted to kind of help it. So when you're translating this word, arrange through writing or drawing, um, act, he or she acts on an object. So kind of like in your head, you're visualizing uh, um, somebody forming a word through writing or drawing and they're doing the action. So that's what you're kind of visualizing when you hear it, is, your, is that's what you're listening to. Um, so that's what it translates to here. She is, uh, is writing. Another one with a different word part. Dash ki ga ise. Dash ki ga ise. Dash ki ga ise is he or she is splitting wood. She's splitting firewood. So as soon as I hear the word dash, I know it means to split, you know, split lengthwise. Dash. And then the word ga with a glottal on there is uh, act on it by an axe. It could be a two or two. And then I hear that in there. So, oh, it has something to do with fire, firewood. And then the E. So those are the word parts. So now it kind of looks congested in there. And I know that Eastern dialects, like, um, you know, my first dialect was, uh, was Chigin dialect, which is like by, in Manitoulin Island. And they would have no problem saying this word as dash got say, dash got say. And they'd be correct because those are the word parts, dash got say. And I kind of wish uh, Bridget was here because she could maybe um, elaborate on that because that's her dialect. Dash got say. So those are the word parts, but for us uh, out this way, Treaty 3, you need um, something to connect them. So you throw an I in there, an I in there. And it sounds like dash ki got say, dash ki got say. Dashki got to say is he or she is splitting, uh, splitting firewood. Um, let's have a little chat here somewhere. Uh, didn't bring it up. I don't know where it is. Oh, here we go. Anyone else down here willing to comment on pronunciation? No, that's not Yeah. All right, um, so I'll go over a couple more just to uh, get familiar with a few of these. Gondinigay, Gondinigay. He or she is pushing. Um, Gond, force or push. In, act on by hand. Gay. So this word part right here, in, goes perfect with this one because this one, gond ends in the letter D, which is a consonant. So usually the next one's a vowel. Got lucky on that one, gond din. We didn't get lucky on this next one because N is a consonant and G is a consonant. So you need something to connect them. And that's where the letter I comes into play. Gond in a gay, gond in a gay. Um, force, act on it by hand. Um, doing the action, you know, so pushing, pushing with your hand or forcing with your hand. Could be one, one way of saying that. All right, uh, for short vowel, unstressed, get deleted unless you have the initial long one. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Um, yeah, I know what you're saying. So short ones getting pushed out. Yeah, that's what, that's what happens. And that's kind of like one of my things with uh, fluency too, is like if you want to sound fluent, you can kind of push out some of these uh, shorter sounds. And it's kind of the letter I 
you know the letter i is the one that seems to get bullied around the most and sometimes it just gets pushed right out so uh if someone's speaking ojibwe really fast they might say don din gay don din gay don din gay and you almost hear don din gay don din gay don din gay and it's really um you hear it in words like uh onish gain onish gain so the word is onin yin is what it, it starts out as. What are you doing? And then it gets shortened to uh, and then uh, let me just write it out there. What are you doing? So compare that to and when you compare the two, I'm just gonna move this over here. You notice that something's got mashed together. So this uh it's got mashed together like that, and then the Z changes to an S on each game the i got pushed out and even the y got switched to an i just from saying it fast so on h to gain so in english it might turn it might sound something like this what are you doing into she doing she doing and that's kind of what happens in that sentence is in it you know jibbo you're saying she doing what you doing and we do it all the time in English, and the same thing happens in Ojibwe. And that's kind of the difference between uh, uh, kind of like a second language learner to um, somebody who has been speaking a language a while. You know, they have that ability to just switch over and, and say words, shorten them. Sometimes that gets uh, confused with fluency too, slang and fluency. Um, this next one, we call Bijuge he or she is pulling. We cook, as soon as I hear that we cook word, it means to draw out and pull. Bij, use it by hand. Pull it by hand. And then gay at the end. He or she is doing the action. Again, it ends in a J right here. This one and the next one starts with a consonant G. What can you do to connect them? Easy. Throw the letter I in there. We cope you gay. We cope you gay. So you're just kind of visualizing this happening. Pulling out, uh, pull it with your hand. Um, this this imager really does a a good job of uh, showing what it does. You know, see him pulling with his hand. Um, so that's what that means. So somebody might translate this as, uh, oh, what does a Biko Bijige mean? Oh, it means pulling. So in this case, it's like pulling with your hand. This is going into detail. Um, there's this other exercise I want to get into in a second, but I want to show you guys some longer versions of these words. All right. When do you use I or O? And uh, when does it get pushed out? So I'm going to just start out with this really uh, easy word down here. A ye koze, which means tired. He or she is tired. Pretty easy word, a ye ko. And then the word is is. So the problem we have is. Um, a ye ko ends in an o, and then is it is in a state or condition. So you can't have those two vowels together unless you have a glottal in the middle, but then the glottal might change the translation. So one of these guys got to go. You know, you can't have one I or one O. And, and it seems to be the I that gets pushed out. A ye ko ze, a ye ko ze. It might, if you were to say the word parts all together, it might be a ye ko is it, a ye ko is it. And that doesn't sound 
um, quite fluent. So, um, it seems like the letter I gets pushed out. Um, <laughs> one of the kids was telling me one time, if you look at the letter O, imagine he's a person. Look how big he is. He's real round. And you look at the letter I, and he's real skinny. Of course he's going to get pushed out. Look how big he is compared to the letter O. So uh, that kind of stuck with me. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but, but it was right, though. It was correct. You know, that kid was only in grade four. And it's like, yeah, that's actually a good way to, good way to explain that. <laughs> um, so he goes in. So it seems to be like the letter I gets pushed out. Kind of a bummer for the letter I. Uh, I have a little empathy for him. Um, so this next one. Oh, I've got a couple of translations on this one. Um, Goshkoze and Onishka. Um, both of them mean to, to get up. So I think the first one is Gushk. It's like you're surprised or you're startled, like all of a sudden. And then uh, Z. There goes that Z ending again in the state or condition. Um, again, ends in the letter O. The letter I gets pushed out. So Gushk was a, he or she gets startled in the state or condition. So kind of like when you're getting up. Uh, the other one, Onishka, is the one I hear uh, a little bit more often. Onishka. And there you go again. On, Onishka, those are the word parts. Um, Eastern dialect, down to an island, they would say, Onishka, Onishka. And that's how they say it. Um, but for us, we got a or at least where I am anyways, I get to throw with the letter I in there to connect them. Onishka, onishka. So arrange or form. Onishka is he or she moves. So you're literally saying uh, form yourself to move or to get up. That's literally <laughs> what you're saying. Um, so that's kind of how that one works. I think a lot of people know this word. Akoze, Akoze, he or she is, is sick. Um, so Ak is like an intense, intense emotion. And then Z again ends in an O. So the letter I gets pushed out, Akoze, in a state or condition, Akoze. So that's what uh, Akoze means. Um, ran into this word, uh, uh, Akoze, Akoze Wigamig. Wigamig is like building. Um, so translates to hospital, Akoze Wigamig. And uh, I met with some elders um, probably about 10 years ago. And um, they, they actually tried to change that word from Akoze to, to No Jumo, No Jumo Wigamig. No jumo is like when you're healing. No jumo. So they wanted to switch it to uh, no jumo wigamig because that's the place where you go to heal. You don't go there to get sick. But this is one of those words where it's so it's so used. Like everybody knows akoze wigamig, even if you know you're just learning language. You know you might oh akoze wigamig. Oh that means uh, the hospital. Um, so. Um, it got stuck. It, it, it stuck as uh, Akoze Wigamig. I shouldn't say stuck, but everybody knows that word. It's kind of universal now. Akoze Wigamig, the hospital. Yeah. The uh, the other one that was kind of um, kind of like that in the same boat was Ishkodeo uh, Daban. Uh, Ishkodeo Daban. Ishkodeo is a fire, and then the Daban is a vehicle. So the fire vehicle. Oh, does that mean fire truck? No, it doesn't mean fire truck. It means a uh, train. So you're like, what train? How does how does that happen? So if you have learners of today, they're like, uh, trains trains are run on fire. And it's like, um, no, but a long time ago they did, and that's the old word for it. And that's the word we've been using for years. You know, in the distance you'd see the you know the black smoke coming. You could hear the train tooting its horn. 
and you would see the fire and you think, oh, that's the fire vehicle, um, train. So that's kind of the word for now. But nowadays, you know, trains, some of them are like magnetic and there's different types of trains. So there'll probably be some new words, some new words for that. But that one is uh, stuck too. Um, Octaway, Octaway Dabon is uh, the way I heard for a fire truck, the vehicle that puts puts things out. There's a request to spell um, the other word that you mentioned for hospital. Mood. Oh no, Jumowigamig. No Jumowigamig. Yeah. Yeah. What was the question? Just on how to spell it. No Jumowigamig. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool thing I found out about this word, um, my buddy uh, Niall Johnston, who's a, who's a colleague of mine and uh, he's, a, he's a buddy of mine, um, he's a really good artist, and he was telling me that uh, this word uh, wigamig, it means building, but if you look closer in there, you hear the word amig, and G and K are interchangeable. So mick, you might hear it, uh, no jamoiga mick, especially up north, you might hear no jamoiga mick, and then you hear the word mick, and then you think, well, what does a, a mick, which is a beaver, have to do with a building? And if you look at a um, a beaver house, it's kind of it's kind of got that dome on there, and he's the builder. Uh, of buildings like you know he can have a pond here and then next year he'll have a pond somewhere else so he's the one who makes these buildings all over the place so before we had like skyscrapers and all these things in different places you had beavers beavers that were our, all over um, our area having all these domes and buildings so that's where that word uh, mig comes from is what he was telling me um, so a lot of the times you hear a building that ends in wig mig a restaurant we send it Wisinewigamig, the the eating place. Um, so that's how the restaurant would be, and then it has that amig in there again. And he's like, that's just a kind of reference to the beaver, and how he's he's the one who kind of started these buildings, and um, we always kind of look to nature when we're trying to learn um, different things. So I thought that was pretty neat. Um, I think this last one, uh, words that uh, end with a long vowel and start with a long vowel. So there's long vowels. So start out with a really long word. There's different ways of saying this word too. So Madwayabi Gibichuke is a cool word. And I was like, holy cow, you know, why, why do Ojibwe words have to be so long? And then uh, if you look at this uh, word parts in detail, you go, ah, that's why. So Madwe, as soon as you hear Madwe, I know it means heard or it's audible. Abig is like string. And Bij, to pull it. And then Ige. Uh, Ige is the one that's on there. So then uh, the question on this one is, look at this word Madwe, it ends in a long sound, which is an E. And then Abig is a long sound. So those are long, those are big, big vowels. Um, e either one of them, they don't want to get pushed out. And if you had a choice, you'd push out a smaller one. But in this case, they're both long, so they're big. So what do you do? Throw the letter Y in there. And again, we have uh, B, Kibichuke. Throw another letter Y at the end. It doesn't freeze it. All right. So in this thing, you like heard something, heard string like when you pull it, action. So it's exactly what it does. You pull on the strings, pulling on the strings to make a sound, he or she does it. is how it translates. 
Um, I think I want to, yeah, we'll do one more. Um, the Abadeo. You know, as soon as I hear Abadeo, I think of teeth. Gazi is to clean, brushing your teeth. So again, we have this um, Gazi word is to wipe or to clean. And then Abid. And then, which is tooth. He or she moves a medium, so that's like a tool. There's the glottal at the end, so that's perfect. So you need something to connect these words together. The long sound Z-I-I -I is a long vowel, Z. And the next one starts with ah, two, two long sounds. So let's throw the letter Y in there. The Z ya badeo. The Z ya badeo. And that's how uh, that's how that one translates to he or she is wiping their uh, wiping their tooth with a with a medium. Um, so that's what that means. The Z ya badeo. Any uh, questions? All right, so I'm gonna share my screen on something else. And this one will probably be the last one. All right, so uh, I, I turned this into an assignment for people, um, for students actually. And uh, there's these word parts you can create. Um, I'm just messing around already with these. Just let me get rid of them. So this word part is uh, um, abe. He or she looks or has a certain vision. So I have this word part abe right at the top. So then the first word uh, you can put is uh, zeke. Zeke abe. And that's actually the first word on there. So as soon as you hear zeke, you know it has a release of liquid or drain or drip. And then abe is he or she uh, has a certain vision or looks a certain way. So when it translates to he or she has a certain vision that uh, has a discharge or liquid coming out of their eyes. Um, so Zika abyss, so maybe somebody um, has got allergies or something, maybe their eyes are so bad they're, they're not crying, but they're having liquid coming out of their eyes. It'd be Zika abyss, Zika abyss. And that's just a word you can create. Another one you could create is like um, somebody looks inside so looking inside being the gay is the word part being the gay with the y being the gay so if you throw that together being the gay coming inside or inside and then uh, looks he or she looks inside so that's what that one will translate to he or she looks inside maybe you're passing by a store or something and the window and you end up being the gay abe. You end up looking inside. That's kind of how that one works. Um, let's see here. Let's go down to uh, he or she is looking good. Minwabe. And wabe is a, a word that you could put on there. So that's kind of how that one works. Yeah, that's, uh, this is, uh, yeah, I learned this through uh, Ojibwe People's Dictionary. Um, if you just go on there, um, maybe, uh, maybe I'll just show you guys a little um, thing on that. So I'll stop sharing this one and I'll share the other one. Um, share screen. Let me try. Let me speed out earlier. All right. There's my browser. Let me 
this will work first. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, you can double check some of these words too if you want to look in detail on some of these. Um, what was one of that word, that last word, min? Um, if. And there it is right there. You just click on it. Cool thing is when you click on it, it has these things uh, at the bottom. Let me move this off to the side. And then uh, you can look at every single word that's been in this dictionary that starts out with min. And then it starts to uh, show you all of them down here. Um, Minoba, Minobaza, it runs well, machine. Mino, you know, day, it cooked well. Um, this one actually has quite a bit on there. And that's how I created this assignment was I, I looked at all of these words and uh, I brought them back to that uh, document I had and just kind of did the light work on that. The other one was uh, ah, bih. let me go back. So that word ah, bih, he or she looks, has a certain vision, has an eye and such a state or condition. So I clicked on ah, bih. And then uh, I looked at all the words that end in ah, bih. And then I pulled those word parts back to um, um, back to the document that I have, and just kind of made that lesson out of there. Um, so just going back to that lesson I had. Um, so that's where all of these words came through. Um, secretly, <laughs> gimus. Yeah, right here, gimuch as a as an adverb. Kind of joke about that. Um, yeah, where is this chat I was just looking at? Uh, okay, so he moves Abe. He or she is uh, secretly, secretly looking, or you know, maybe you're at a powwow and uh, you're single and you're looking around and you do a gimuz Abe. I look around secretly if you want. I was kind of peeking without looking. The other one was uh, uh, nagoze. Nagoze appears appears a certain way. This is a really good one because uh, nagoze appears a certain way. Ayeko is tired. Yeah, I think we've done that word part. Ayeko nagoze. So if you didn't know what uh, that word meant, ayeko nagoze. You can figure it out easily. You know that the word ayeko means tired. Nagoze means appears a certain way. Ayeko nagoze, she or she appears tired. Um, maybe you just give a kid a bath. Bine, clean. Nagoze, bine nagoze. He or she appears to be clean. Um, I guess near, somebody nearby. And Beisho, Beisho Nagoze, where she appears to be nearby. Um, disturbed. Niske, Niske, Niske Nagoze, where she appears like messy or, you know, kind of disturbed, I guess is the better word, but not so much mentally, just physically like out of place. Um, Skinagoze. Go down to a couple more of these ones. Um, some of these word parts. Most common one I hear, um, but two. As soon as I hear that, I think of running. And there's so many words that end in running. So let's have, uh, you know, maybe you scare a, a moose out of the water. So he comes out of the water running. A blob of two. Guabatu, I hardly hear that one. Um, I think the more common one you might hear is bimme, uh, and going along, bimme, going along, and then batu, going along, running. Bimme batu, bimme batu. So you might hear bimme batu, 
the Migwa two, he or she is running. So that's where that word comes into play. Um, somebody starts off running. Maji, start off running. Maji Batu, Maji Batu. Um, one thing with um, the this ending uh, two ends in two O's. Um, the further north you go, it'll be pronounced to Maji Bato, Maji Bato. Um, you know, word that Bimibato, Bimibato. So the further north you go, that's when it changes to O. And you can kind of hear it in Boujou, where someone will say Bojo, Bojo. Um, in Minnesota, they would only use O sounds, they wouldn't use O sounds. So everything would be Bimibatu, Aguabatu, Majibatu. Um, and then as you get kind of like towards Nestor Falls is where I hear it, where it starts kind of switching to the O, the Mibito, uh, Aguabato, Mibito, Majibato, kind of in further north, you kind of hear it more often. So we're, uh, where I am, right on the border with Minnesota, we're right in the middle between where it switches. So uh, we tend to use both of them. You know, I'll talk with my grandma and I'll say, how do you say running in Ojibwe? Oh, Bemibtu. And then 15 minutes later, we're talking about something else. How do you say running again? Oh, the mid toe, the mid toe. <laughs> so then she switches off to that one. And that's uh, pretty common because you would, uh, we're right in the middle where the dialects switch. So we use both of them. So if you hear the mid toe, the mid two, both of them are correct. You can kind of get a, an understanding of where somebody is from just by how they're speaking. Um, Bean de gay would come in. I think we had that word before. Being the gay but two comes in running. Somebody comes in running. That's, a, that's another one. Um, a bit, you know, is when you sit a certain way, the first word. Now, this is where spelling comes into play. If you remember the first word we had, it ended, it started with um, a bit, two A's, and this one is a bit with one A. So it's kind of where spelling comes into play. You got to make sure you spell your words correctly. So, a bit is to sit a certain way. Um, Dace a bit. Dace a bit is like sit on a flat surface. So here she is sitting on the flat surface. And if you want to change it to an object, like a noun, all you have to do is add win to it. So Dace a win. Anybody ever hear a chair called Dace a win? Dace a win. Um, Dace a win, and in our that's how we say chair in our place. So now it changes from flat surface he or she is sitting to the object where he or she is sitting on a flat surface. So basically when that's where that one came into play. Um, Anje, change, change while sitting, like when you're just kind of changing around and moving around a bit. Anje, uh, Anje a bit, change sitting. Uh, here's a really common one, the mud, upright like this. The mud and then a bit, the mud to bit, the mud to bit. So that's where that word the mud to bit comes from. Um, sitting in a certain sit he or she sits uh, upright like that. So that's where the mud to bit comes from. Um, sitting facing backwards. Or she, let me put these in order down here. Jigadabe, he or she um, faces backwards. Um, that's kind of how that one works. I think this last one. This last one is actually the one that uh, kind of inspired me to do this one. You know, when I was talking about my name, May Mushkawe Gabo, uh, my grandma's oh, standing strong. Yeah, that's the spirit you're named after. Um, so, so how do you know it meant that? She said, well, go bow. Listen to it. Go bow is like, uh, he or she stands a certain way. And that's what kind of turned me on to this, uh, this type of uh, Ojibwe to learn these word parts. Gwake, gwake is turn directions. Gwake, gaboy, turn while you're standing. Gwake, gaboy, gwake, gaboy, turn when you're standing. Um, 
standalone. Anjike, Anjike Gabwe, Anjike Gabwe. Um, so quietly, really long word. So my little fit arm here. Here's Gabwe. Kushkwa Waj Gabwe, Kushkwa Waj Gabwe. Sit quietly or sit still while standing or uh, be still when you're standing. So these are kind of where these uh, word parts happen. And the cool thing about them is you can go on the Ojibwe People's Dictionary. Um, you can just find a few of them if you want, just to kind of nerd out if you want, just check them out. Um, but get familiar with them because these word parts um, will stay the same. You know, anytime you hear the word quick, quick, I know it means to change direction, like right up here. And then me, gone, eh. It's like you're leading. There's a lot of words that start out with uh, me gone on there. Um, yeah, a J, go back. This one up here, a J, a J, gobble it. Stand backwards, a J, gobble it. Um, these word parts will pretty much stay the same. Um, all right, so if anyone has any uh, questions or anything about these ones, I know I wasn't really up to date on the chats while I was doing this. So now is a good time to ask some questions. I have a question, Jason. Sure. Um, when you were, I asked, I asked Chris because I didn't want to interrupt you, but when you were um, putting two word parts together, you knew, maybe it was a verbo. You anyway, you knew whether it was um, an I or an A, and I asked like, how do you can you tell? So you go. I should ask at the same time. So when you when you're doing the verbo, you added an I, but I don't think you specified how you knew to add the I. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, I said it really quick. It was really fast. Um, I should have went in detail on it. Um, it's usually like uh, um, if there's a, a word that ends in a consonant and the next word part starts with a consonant, you, you need something to glue them together. And usually it's either one I or one O and it's almost always the letter I. It's the one that puts it together. So just add an I on there. If you're unsure and you don't know and you don't have the dictionary in front of you, just add an I on there. Cause like 90% of the time it's the letter I. Sometimes it's the letter O um, I don't know the rules on that one. I know that uh, when I ask about it, they say, oh, it just sounds better when you say it that way. And to me, <laughs> it's not um, thorough enough, but uh, I don't know the, uh, the detailed answer on O's and I's, but I know 90% of the time it's an, it's an I. But if you just say them, you know, if, it's, if you say them out loud, one will sound better to you. And you're like, oh, yeah, that one sounds better. Let's go with that one. Yeah. You bet. Yeah, these will be available on the website. I'll send these uh, to Chris and, um, and Shannon. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, anything I'm creating on here is just for everybody. Um, just share it. You know, no use uh, recreating the wheel. You know, if you want to do this lesson with somebody, um, go for it. Yeah. Any questions, Jason? I couldn't, I couldn't type, so I'm saying hi to Wanda. <laughs> Bonjour, Wanda. Since you agreed with me, it's nice to see uh, the work um, you've been doing since um, graduating from the program, and you know, learning from elders. Yeah, so proud of you. Yeah, miigwech. Yeah, there's a lot of elders getting older too, so we need to really get. I'm on. an elder now too. <laughs> All right. Well, um, again, if you guys have any um, things you guys want to learn in the next, when it's my turn to teach again, um, just let us know, you know, if there's something you're unsure of or, you know, there's some words you want us to take apart. Maybe we can do that in the future. Um, just let us know, like, what you guys are interested in and we'll, we'll try and tackle them and do our best anyways. So in the chat, I've shared a... Uh, feedback form for Jason's session. 
If you fill this out, you'll get a certificate for the session and there's also a space on there to make suggestions for future topics for him. All right, looks like it might uh, might rain, so uh, over here anyways, so we're just gonna be hanging tight. It's raining. Um, yeah. All right, guys, thanks for uh, joining our session this week. Have a, have a good day. Beyond Guam is in. Jason.